Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our public class for this morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Before we start, I would like us to say a short prayer. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We just want to thank you for this time that we can read your word together and discuss it together. We pray that your word will change our hearts and change the ways, the way that we look at things. We pray that you will be with us in this class and this discussion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome to this Bible class and thank you very much for joining us. So today we are looking at James chapter 2. We are still in the book of James and the topic is do not show favoritism or partiality. We are going to break it into three parts again. I think it works better because you can look at the one section and discuss it and see what you are learning from it, second section and third section. So Stephen is going to read for us and we'll discuss as, as we read. Our first part of the reading is James chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 4. <clears throat> the sin of partiality. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and, the cl and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Thank you, Shafi. Uh, what are your thoughts about this reading, this first part? Well, it is true, I guess, and we are all, we are all to blame to some degree mm -hmm. for that, because whenever we see, including myself, we see someone in shabby clothing or dirty, perhaps on the side of the street, we, we tend to judge people, mm -hmm. you know, they have not made it for themselves, they have failed. But of course, these are, these are the views of the world. And yes. As a church, we we ought to to be different. As Christians, we ought to be different and not judge. I think so, yes. Mm. And I think it's important to highlight that James is writing to the church here. So he's not even writing to people outside the church. Mm. He is warning us as Christians. And he's making an example of somebody coming to our meeting, somebody coming to our church. If you see a person dressed in nice clothes, and somebody coming in shabby clothes. If you are honest in your heart, who are you likely to receive and give a better place to sit? Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I don't want to say it's human nature because I think it's something that we can consciously train ourselves not to do. We can consciously train ourselves to treat each other equally. Because I think for me, what he's saying is that if we are believers of Christ, Christ is the authority. He is our, our Father. God is our Father. And He is the only one who is up there. And I think in His eyes, the rest of us are just down here. And we ought to look at each other that way, treat each other equally. I think that for me is what it's, it's saying. Because God looks at the heart and not at the outside. Exactly. So no matter what we look like, Oh, how nice we smell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, God looks at our hearts. And I think it links perfectly with the part we read in James chapter 1, where it said the pure religion that God accepts is to look after the orphans and the widows, basically to look after the people who are less fortunate than we are. And it's the same thing when it says, because God says in this book, um, if we show favoritism, it's we're doing the opposite of what God wants us to do. It, it says, hasn't God chosen the poor to inherit the kingdom of God? 
and it says, aren't the rich the ones who punish us, who oppress us? What does that mean? What do you think that means? That part, this distinction about the poor and the rich? I mean, we're still going to read it, but... Yeah, but this one part here. Yeah. Well, I guess there is a tendency that people who have a lot of money and a lot of wealth yeah, don't care about the About poor. others. Yeah, I think that is the thing. So I think the point that James is trying to make is for us to show kindness to all people, whether they are rich, whether they are poor, whether we accept whatever them, their whatever their circumstances, I think mm -hmm. we just, you know, be kind to all people mm -hmm. and uh, receive people the same way, treat people the same way. And um, so our way and how we respond to people should be motivated by kindness, by grace, by compassion. And for me, that speaks to exactly how God treats us. So it's just what we receive from God is what we need to impart to others. I think for me, that is what it tells us or it teaches us. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yes, exactly. But I guess we can also say that, you know, uh, the circumstances that people find themselves in are often beyond their control. Mm -hmm. I mean, often it's also the society or the, the context, the situation they they are in mm -hmm. that uh, contributed towards their poverty and exactly. their, their state of being. And that's what the Bible is saying, do not become judges with evil mm -hmm. thoughts, because then it means we start judging others according to what we see, but God judges us according to what is in our hearts. I think that's what you were saying also. Mm -hmm. yes. And the second part is James, still James chapter 2, but now we are reading from verse 5 to verse 7. Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor men. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the, one, the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by, by which you were called? Yes, oh, okay, I was already yes, we already about spoke that. About yes. It. But I think, uh, what do you think God means about that? Has he not chosen the poor to inherit the kingdom? I mean, the meek shall inherit the earth mm -hmm. is also another saying in the Bible. And mm -hmm. being meek and humble um, attributes that God favors mm -hmm. and not looking after worldly things and yes. material wealth. Yes. Mm. So I think that is exactly what it is. It's about, you know, poor, poor in the Bible will mean maybe materially, but it will also mean spiritually in your heart. Are you humble? Mm -hmm. Are you meek? And that's what God means when he says the poor will, you know, will inherit the earth the ones who are humble before him, the ones who are poor in spirit, who look up to him, are the ones who, are, who will inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And and it says, aren't the rich the one who drag, who drag us to courts and oppress us? And it's mostly about how people with lots of money, at least, or material things, tend to not care about other people. And it does not mean that all people who are rich are like that. I think it's just the warning because in our world we put these standards. If you are rich with, and famous, we think you are better than other people. And I think what James is telling us is that that's not how God looks at it. Wealth and riches do not mean anything to him. It's the condition of our hearts, I think, that means a lot. And if you read in the Bible, if you try to look at scriptures where God talks about the poor, he always says, do not forget the poor among you. Look after the poor among you. In 1 Corinthians, for example, chapter 1, verse 27, it says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So for me, it's mainly about the things that we value or we put value to on earth in this world are not the same things that God put value to. 
uh, if we value the rich people, it's not what God values. God values a pure heart, a pure and a humble heart, a meek spirit, people who are not proud, but who always look with compassion towards others. And I think it's just, you know, it's not about, you don't, we're not going to respect rich people, but it's just about how we treat everybody with kindness, whether they are rich or poor. And what is important for us. And what is important for us. Because materialism is also a worldly thing. Exactly. And at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything and we cannot take it with us. Exactly, yeah. And if you think about a poor person, for example, they, they usually don't have anyone else to defend them. So I think that's also partly why God says he looks after the poor. Um, he becomes their defender. He's the one who then advocate for them because in the worldly way of doing things, people don't think too much about people who have less. But we as Christians are being challenged to not follow the attitudes of the world, to be different, to stand out and treat people differently from how the world would normally treat them. To love mercy, to do justice and to walk humbly. Exactly. And ever since the beginning, God speaks about the poor, even to the people of Israel, he always told them, when you have entered the land and you have everything that you need, do not forget the poor. He also says, do not forget the Lord your God, but he always says, do not forget the poor among you. So we always have to think about that, how we treat people who of low position, people with less than what we have. And, and it's important to God how, how we, treat, we treat them. Anything else that you want to add? No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Mm. Okay. Then the last part, uh, James still. Now we're reading from verse 18 to verse 13. 8 to 13. 8 to 13, yes, sorry. If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Amen. 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 What do you think about that part? Well, it speaks to the clear instructions of God, like the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not commit murder. Mm -hmm. But I think it also says you can't choose one over the other, you have to adhere to all of them. Mm -hmm. So basically, there, there is no differentiation in sin. So if we claim we love God and our neighbor, but um, you know we we steal or we even murder, mm -hmm. then we are as bad as people who just murder or who just steal. Exactly. So we cannot call ourselves Christians. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically, the law is one. There is no there's no grades or degrees, because mm -hmm. sometimes we tend to think, oh, that person is the worst one because he is a murderer, and I'm better off because I just I told a little lie. <laughs> <laughs> and I think God does not have those grades or degrees of sin. I think in in front of God's eyes, sin is just sin. But this is a difficult part for, for us as humans. As humans, we want to categorize it. Yes. You know, there's better. We want to feel better. Yes, be to, better. <laughs> or to feel better than someone else you think who committed the, the worst sin. But to God, sin is sin. And he says, if you break one, you've broken law, the law. It's not that you all know you are better off because you just did a tiny little thing. <laughs> you know, sin is just sin before God. So if you think, okay, I'm not a murderer, I'm better off, but then you don't love your neighbor, you don't love, love the other person, you are the same as, as the murderer. It's just sin before God. And the, yeah. Sorry, it also reminds me of this uh, verse, 
Why do you look for the speck in your brother's eye when you have a plank? A plank in your own eye, exactly. So they all tie together, you see. And um, so what, what are we supposed to do? It tells us clearly we should be showing mercy. We should be merciful towards others. And um, whoever does not show mercy also, you know, is not shown mercy. I think God is, is very just in how he deals with us as humans. Yeah. And um, what what we think of love in the Bible, you know, in uh, First Corinthians, love is patient, mm -hmm. love is kind. That's exactly how we're supposed to treat people, regardless of their ranking in society. And we also need to look at ourselves and know that we are also not high up there. We are just children of God because we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We believe in Jesus. We also just are shown mercy by God because we are saved by grace. So it's the exact attitude we need to be uh, showing others in the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. So next time you uh, you see somebody, I don't know, because now we're not even going out, so we're not seeing many people. But the next time you see somebody who does not seem to be presentable to you, check your attitude again, check your motives, and think about how God receives that person, how God would want us to treat that person. I think it's a challenge for us, even though we're not going out. But in our minds, if we start changing our attitudes, to start not stop grading people according to how they look, how they present themselves, what they have, and just start looking at people as people, because that's how I think God wants us to treat them. And um, maybe one of the things we could do this week is to look at all the other scriptures that uh, where God talks about how we should treat the poor, how we should treat the lowly among us, and reflect on those. Because I think what is important about the book of James is that it's not just theory. He's literally teaching us things that we can put into practice. Like from this point, you know exactly how to treat people who are in low position, who are disadvantaged. So I think that is the challenge for us. So just go look at scriptures, what it says about people of low position, people who are poor, people who have less, how, should, how we should be treating them, and just see how we can try to put that into practice. And the, the main thing, as the last part says, is to show mercy, to be merciful. And we cannot claim, it's, you know, in other parts of the scripture it says, we cannot claim to love Jesus if we, not, if we don't love our brother, who we can see. So it's important really how to, we treat people in God's eyes. Anything amen. else to add? Amen. <laughs> amen and amen. So thank you very much for joining us. Just uh, read the book of James again, first chapter and the second chapter and just reflect on it on your own and look at, at the scriptures of how we should be treating people. And remember the best, the first law, the commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you very much for joining us. Stephen is going to say a short prayer for us before we close. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for this Bible class and uh, for the blessing that it will bring to everyone who watches it. And please, Lord, remind us that we shall show mercy to others, that we, show, that we love our neighbor, and that we don't judge. Uh, search our hearts, God, and our minds, and touch us with your Holy Spirit. We pray for all of this in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.